Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. What can I do with you? You're so beautiful and lovely, lovely people. <laughs> Some guru are like this, you know what I mean? Yeah? Very developed, huh? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> halfway developed, you know, a little bit here, but I'm trying hard to develop a little bit slowly. <laughs> but, you know, when you get older, you just develop, develop. <laughs> you know that, right? And in the wrong place, you know. I, uh, I'm trying to balance inside and outside, but <laughs> sometimes the outside is just too fast, you know. Too fast, he's in a hurry to develop. I don't know where is he going, but he likes to go somewhere. Yeah, well. Mm. And all the food they cook for me, huh? Oh, wicked, wicked. <laughs> I have not just finished the, the, the breakfast. They already brought lunch and dinner. <laughs> I just went upstairs, you know, to clean my teeth, go down, eh? Some more food again. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah, because I don't come here so often, you know? So whenever I come here, they try to show their, develop the love for me. <laughs> and, and that affects my development as well. And <laughs> we develop all together, my goodness. I hope you have good food also. Yes. And how much can you eat, my God? <laughs> I mean, how much can we eat that they cook me so many stuff? Yeah. Oof. Luckily, I choose only some, you know, the, the, the less calorie possible. <laughs> but you know what? The best stuff are the, the ones that have more calorie, don't you see? <laughs> huh? You often notice, huh? Yeah, they're so wicked, you know. Hmm. Like the one that is nutritious and all that, often don't taste as good. <laughs> and the baddies, you know, oh, they taste so delicious, yeah. And you could eat forever, no? Nah? Mm. Yeah. Over here, it's difficult to discipline, right? Nah? Yeah, at home you say, oh, I'm going breatharian and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did try, right? <laughs> you did think about it at least, huh? Yeah? And when you come here, oh, never mind, maybe I do it next year, you know. <laughs> uh, after the retreat, no? Nah? Yeah, yeah, after the retreat. And then another retreat, okay, okay, we still have time. Master, hey, we have a couple more years. <laughs> Might as well, you know, enjoy before we die, whatever. Yeah, all kind of excuses, yes. It's very difficult, yeah. These kitchen people, they are full of love, you know? Love for food, yeah. <laughs> And if they eat alone, they feel guilty, so they have to share it with us, you know? They cook a lot of stuff, my goodness. The more I say, please be simple, the more they develop. You know? Yeah, one assistant stay here, you know? And uh, one time, I don't come here often, but I came here sometime, yeah? One time, for some reason, I came here once. And I saw they cook something like uh, the red rice. Do you have it today? Yes. Okay. Every day. Wow. My God. You know, at home, I, I told you I eat like a brown rice, yeah? That's a basic food, no? And now and again, you know, once a week. Sometimes, you know, three, three times a week depends on, yeah, if I have time, I cook many times, and then they slowly air it on TV, because I cannot just do it once a week, like regular basic, you know, my time is so, so sometimes very, very crazy. I can't arrange it regularly, you know, I don't sleep on time, I don't eat on time, the biological clock to, to, to my body is something like from planet Mars. 
My body doesn't understand anymore what a biological clock is, you know. I just do whatever is there. I don't care what time. I can't. I cannot look at the watch and say, now what time I go to sleep, what time I do what. I cannot anymore, you know, it's just crazy. And by the way, I'm also trying to tell my assistant over there as a comfort in, oh, you know, brown rice is nutritious, you know, and sesame is a protein in there, so we had enough. Okay. <laughs> so then everybody here, okay, you know, the non, uh, non-processed rice is nutritious, fine, good. And now they, they, they cook in it here. But it has to be red rice, it's more pretty. <laughs> the brown rice is too common, you know? <laughs> Always one step better than a master. So when I came here, I was expecting some white rice, I have to confess you, because <laughs> <laughs> because we always eat white rice and better stuff here, you know. So when I come here once, I expect white rice, you know, fragrant, you know, the, the, the Thailand or the Vietnamese fragrant rice, you know. Oh, my life, long time no see, you know. <laughs> hey, what, are you, what is that? <laughs> Red rice. I said, what, what, what is that for? She, she said, oh, this is uh, nutritious. <laughs> It's a could be a brown rice, but brown rice is, I think, cheaper and simple to buy anywhere. And red rice is not easy to buy, I guess, you know. But of course, the rarer, the more precious. So they bought the red rice. They think it's just nutritious for everybody. In Chinese, it's not just nutritious, but it means develop, you know. <laughs> Bu, you know. Bu means you add in, you know. Bu also means add in on. Yeah, add on. Add on to something. So it's a play with words, or so maybe they write differently, yeah? And the assistant is already developed somewhat, you know? And she told me that she, she needs to trim down of her development. So. so I even gave her some, some tea, which called, you know, for slimming. I said, you buy this tea, you drink it three, four times a day, and then you'll be better. <laughs> but when I come back, I see the red rice for for boo, you know, boo mean adding on. <laughs> I say, where, where else you want to add on? <laughs> it's so funny, my God, copy, copycat. It's not always good. Okay, but you like the rice or not? Yes. Is it better than the white rice? Yes. Really? Yes. You like it better? Yes. In which way? Taste better or what? Taste better. Taste better? Yes. Yes. Who tastes better rice hen? <laughs> Crazy people. <laughs> Crazy taste. I don't understand you guys anymore. Okay, and then complain that it's expensive. Eh? I have in all kind of rarity. What do we have next? Maybe golden rice, huh? <laughs> when they develop some golden rice, maybe you get it, huh? Okay, okay. All right. Whatever, yeah? When I come here, I prefer to have white rice for a change, you know, every day, you know, brown rice, sesame, well, <laughs> and the Nobel Peace Prize soup. <laughs> Truly, because, because uh, whatever I can get for, for cooking, you know, like a nice stuff, I said, save it, save it, huh? Nobody touch it, huh? <laughs> it's for me to cook. You know, I put it in a corner and put a note, you know, no touch. <laughs> Yeah, because sometimes they bring something from Taiwan or if they go some, to Paris or something, or London come back or something, then they have some good stuff, you know? But where I live, there's nothing to, to buy much, you know, except those uh, ready-made vegan sauces, you know, those very long, and, yeah. Not like the American vegan sausage even, it tastes always the same, you know, no matter what package they put in and what color. <laughs> Sometimes you buy a white vegan sausage in a package. Yeah, they say Vienna sausage or something. And another time you buy it in a, uh, another pack, packet longer or maybe red color or brownish color and they say some other sausage. And for me, it tastes so <laughs> the same. And so this is our choice we had. So every day this guy, assistant, he chop either white vegan sausage he put in there <laughs> in the soup or the red vegan sausage, you know. Or sometimes mixed uh, with tofu, or sometimes without tofu, but it tastes always the same every day. So we call it Nobel Peace Prize soup, <laughs> you know, because 
after you eat that soup and you still feel peaceful and happy. <laughs> and still, you know, loving everybody else, then you're really worthy of Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. All right, so, so now you are having a new diet, huh? Red rice, huh? Those, you know, sissy sassy, thin and long, colorful, yeah? And you like it better? Yeah, at home you don't cook like that? What do you cook at home, rice? White? Ah, no wonder. And every day I'm brown rice, so here I like white rice. So I guess now they buy a packet of white rice waiting for me to come all the time. And for you, it's all red rice. You like it, huh? Yes. What tastes good about it? It tastes really good? Yeah. <laughs> Better than brown rice. Of course I know that. <laughs> Don't you think I know that? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but what I mean is, you know, <laughs> always picky, no? Mm. The reason I eat brown rice just for the simplicity of it, yeah? And the less work, yeah? And also enough nutrition and vitamin B and all that, yeah? It's not because um, we want to be developed like that. It's not that. It just happened that brown rice is simple. You know, they don't process too much. That's number one, less work. Less work for the world, you see? Less energy spending. Number two, the husk huh, is still there, or the silver cover outside is still there. So it's good it has vitamin B and some other stuff. Yeah. By the way, just convenient, yeah? And not because we eat it, just because we want to have uh, nutrition or anything. It's just more simple and convenient, yeah? Easy to, to cook, easy to have, and, and it's, by the way, already have some <laughs> nutritional value. It's not, not deliberately made like that, so that we have more nutritional value. Understand me? Just go for simple. Yeah. But here you go a step further, you know, you have pretty rice, red rice. Oh, first time I ate it in my life. Yeah. Anyway, so there is a difference between the motive, you know, of our action. Do you understand me? Yeah? It's not what you do, it's why also. Yeah? So, of course, uh, brown rice is, you know, <laughs> cheaper and easy to buy anywhere. Yeah, and uh, nutrition and simple. For the most simple cooking and more nutritional value, just choose that. You see what I mean? So we don't have to do much. Just uh, soak it and wash it and, and, uh, and cook it, you know? And then some sesame already made it long time, a big jar and everybody put some and then that's it, mix it and uh, soy sauce or salt, you know? Then you're done for the day, yeah? That is the purpose of us eating the brown rice at my home. It's not because of, of nutrition. Of course it's nutrition, but it's like that. And then they heard that they have to make it better, you know, and now it's a nutrition. A red rice. Red rice is nutritious, yeah? It is? More than brown rice? No? Less, huh? Same? You sure? Mm, okay, whatever you have be. But this is just an example, you know, of the motive behind our action, yeah? Sometimes we copy somebody doing something, look similar or exactly the same, but the motive behind is not the same. Understand? All right. Now it comes to... Uh, just like our life, we have to, to live more simple, eh? not to, to be for better and better and all that stuff. Yeah, okay? Understand? And you eat whatever you want, of course. Eh? And if it's good for you, you can continue to eat that at home. Hmm? Maybe it's good. Mm, I also don't even eat that much rice, brown rice also, you know, just some tofu, raw, simple. Yeah, and then... Uh, Ketchup, <laughs> soy sauce. Yeah, I eat my two, one or two pieces of tofu. That that is really feel good for lunch already, or dinner, or breakfast, or lunch, breakfast, dinner together. <laughs> and then uh, some fruits, you know. That's very simple. So I hardly even eat rice at home. I do eat, but uh, not like every day, you know. Not like uh, I used to do, like the Vietnamese people eat rice every day. Yeah. Okay. 
because it just uh, you just make life more simple. That's all, you know. And whatever you eat is enough for the body to to function. Hmm? All right. Not to be sick. That's all. But not to try so hard, you know. <laughs> I try too hard to uh, make yourself develop, you know, it's, it's already difficult being old age <laughs> to keep your development slow. <laughs> yeah. Now, and the reason, just by the way, you know, we're talking about the motive of our action. Yeah, by the way. Like, uh, I do not take your donation, okay? That's number one, because I believe each one should be independent, yes? Also to show you that we should not take, we should just give, yeah? But that doesn't mean, suppose I'm very rich, yeah? But that doesn't mean that you will try to take more from me because I'm rich. Do you understand? Yes. You have to remember the five precepts, not taken what is not given. Even when you force people to give you by some means, it's also not given. Do you understand me? Yeah. I teach you meditation to go back to the kingdom of God, to discover your great self, not to use this power to force someone to give you something that you like, whether that person like it or not. Do you understand? Yes. This is the grave a violation of the no-stealing precept. This is really very serious. So the motive behind our action have to always be very pure. Yeah? Very unconditional. You know that already. I feel very rich all the time because I feel I'm given anything I need. And I'm never lacked of anything. Whereas you still feel like you're lacking something. Besides, how rich is rich? Huh? It depends on how you feel, right? Some people are very rich, or at least reasonably rich, but they never give anything to anyone. They never done anything good to anybody. They just keep all their money. I don't feel that person is very rich at all because he doesn't enjoy the power of his possession. Whereas, whenever I give, I feel powerful. Wow, oh, I have so much money, I can give, I can give, I can give. Do you understand me? Yes. I'm just saying that, but actually I don't feel that much power. But what I mean is, if you don't enjoy the power of your possession, then you are a very, very poor person, no matter how much money you have. On the contrary, if somebody who doesn't have so much money but is always generous and kind and helping people, that person is very rich. His inside is very rich. Who can be more rich than that? You know, the more you share, the richer you feel. This should be the, the reason why you are given the money. I told you long ago, it's like a water tank. Eh? You pump water into the tank so that the tank will distribute in the whole village or town or maybe in your house at least. What's the good of the water tank to keep the water in there and don't give it to, to your house so you can't even wash a vegetable, you can't even flush the bathroom? Is that a good water tank? No. And then that's all he has all the time. And the water will become bad and stagnant and maybe useless and in turn also damage the tank. Yeah, make the tank smelly or rusty because of bad substance in the stagnant water. You capish? Yeah? Yes. The same, you see river, lot of water is given everywhere, yeah? To nourish the, the field, yeah? And to water the plants and in turn the plants give fruit to the people, yeah? Trees give fruit to the people, plants give vegetable to people. That is the really good river, and that is the duty of the river, and that is a noble duty of a river. If the river is just giving water all for himself and giving nothing, then what kind of river is that? Huh? Do you understand? Yeah. 
So God gave us some money or some power or some kind of ability for us to share it with others, to contribute it to the society. Yeah? Hmm. I don't take your donation, not just now, because I have money, but even before, when I had no home. You know, I had no home before. <laughs> it's funny. I had no money, no home, but so many people come at that time. You know, it's many enough for that time to become uh, monks and nuns with me, remember? Yeah? We just camp on riverside and all that. And we did not uh, have any home. We don't have much money at that time. Some money we make before or something, then we just keep spending it. You know, we're very simple actually. So we just barbecue, you know, take the wood, you know, drifting on the bank of the river, and then we make fire, and then we cook. And even some person happened to be along that side uh, when we were barbecue at night after the whole day, go and lecture and then come back to our home <laughs> next to the tent, you know, and uh, make some barbecue. I even criticized in his mind, oh, what kind of Buddha come here and just barbecue and don't talk about Buddhism. I talk all day already. <laughs> just came back from lecture. You understand what I mean? <laughs> And we just roast some uh, corn and, and some whatever we can buy, you know. It's very cheap in Taiwan. Yeah, something like that. And sugar cane and <laughs> uh, orange and apples and those things, you know, easy to roast. And he sit there and criticize in his mind. Later he even told me. <laughs> so you understand the human mind is not very ideal, yeah? It's easy to criticize anything we want, but we have to first check us, have we contributed anything? Are we worthy in a position to criticize anyone at all? Do we do anything better than that person? Do you understand me? Mm. Because if we don't do anything good, then uh, we are not even worthy to even open our mouth to say anything to anyone, criticizing or not. So. Uh, even if you meditate a lot already and you've been with me many years, you still have to remember the five precepts, okay? Yes, yes. yes. The first one is ahimsa, no harming, no killing anyone, any being. The second is what? No lying. No lying. No lying. Fine, it doesn't matter, second or third. The third? No stealing. Right. The fourth? Yeah, no fooling around too many women, too many men, okay? Five? Ah! No intoxicants, yeah, like cigarette, drugs, alcohol, yeah? Even gambling, you know, anything that make you addicted and, and also uh, damage your health and your family relationship, yeah? And then ruin your property and all that. Some of the tragic tolls of addictive drug abuse over 200,000 deaths each year, costs of 181 billion U.S. dollars each year in the United States, 33 billion U.S. dollars in the U.K. Lifetime cost of current drug addiction amounts to 575 billion U.S. dollars in the U.K. Over 100 British children each week call a hotline to express concern about their parents' drug and alcohol use. Harmful effects brain damage with mental and emotional losses, stroke, heart disease and irreversible damage, liver disease, tuberculosis, emphysema, cancer, depression, suicide, permanent memory loss, mental illness, higher infant mortality, increased crime and violence, impotence. Crime and violence. Illegal drugs are a factor in 50% of burglaries in the United Kingdom each year. In the U.S., 60% of people arrested each year have been taking illegal drugs. 650 heroin addicts in the U.S. committed 70,000 crimes in a three-month period. Social costs. U.S. businesses lose 100 billion U.S. dollars per year due to employees' drug and alcohol abuse. Australians pay 53 billion US dollars per year for health care, law enforcement and lost productivity of drug users. 
environmental costs. Every gram of cocaine produced destroys 4.4 square meters of rainforest, with 300,000 hectares of rainforest lost each year to cocaine production. Death. 52 people die each day due to drugs in the U.S. In Canada, substance abuse is attributed to 21% of total deaths and 23% of potential life years lost due to early mortalities. Plus more. Subsidize and convert the drug industry into vegetable organic farming. For help quitting, please visit Some of the tragic tolls of alcohol. 2.5 million alcohol-related deaths per year worldwide. One in six deaths on the road in the UK are caused by drunk driving. In Australia alone, 70% of adults are negatively impacted by another's drinking, with 43% affected by physical or verbal abuse. Over 100 British children each week call a hotline to express concern about their parents' alcohol and drug use. Cost of alcohol-related illnesses, 186.4 billion U.S. dollars in the United States. 2.41 million pounds for prescription medications each year in England, U.K., with overall health costs in the billions. Up to 210 to 665 billion U.S. dollars globally. Disease, higher amounts of alcohol increase the cancer risk. Even half a glass of wine daily increases the risk of mouth or throat cancer by 168%. Cancer of the liver, breast, colon, esophagus, rectum, linked to 20% of breast cancer cases. Liver disease, cardiovascular disease, mental toxicity, brain damage, amnesia and dementia, brain shrinkage, organ failure. Heart, liver, kidneys, stomach, pancreas, eyes. Birth defects, children afflicted by anxiety and depression, mental retardation, fetal alcohol syndrome, stented growth, facial deformity, sudden infant death syndrome, miscarriage. Alcohol-related violence, child abuse, 50% of cases, violence toward loved ones, 30% of cases. Violent acts, 40 to 80% of cases. Suicides, 20 to 50% of cases. Plus more. For help quitting, please visit. Some of the tragic tolls of tobacco, 5.4 million smoking-related deaths per year worldwide. Tobacco use kills one person every six seconds. Smoking-related costs, 193 billion U.S. dollars annually in the United States alone. Depression, light and mild cigarettes just as harmful. Causes cancer and diseases in animal companions harms lung cell DNA that regulates breathing, speeds the aging process, toxic residues of third-hand smoke, heart disease, coronary thrombosis, cerebral thrombosis, and kidney failure. Cancer, mouth, liver, breast, and colorectal cancer, lung cancer, esophagus cancer, kidney cancer, bladder cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, bronchitis, stroke, impotence. Additional harms for exposure to secondhand smoke, 600,000 deaths worldwide each year, childhood arteriosclerosis leading to heart attacks and strokes in adulthood, Sudden infant death syndrome. More than 80% of the babies who die are exposed to secondhand smoke. Infertility, miscarriages, and premature deliveries. Childhood asthma, bronchitis, ear infection. Cleft lip or palate. Hyperactivity and aggression in asthmatic boys. Circulatory problems in women. 
lung damage in children leading to adult emphysema, lung cancer in non-smoking restaurant servers, hearing loss across all frequencies, childhood behavioral problems when exposed while in the womb, plus more. For help quitting, please visit For more information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. Yeah, okay. That's good. At least you remember. And you have to check yourself every day with a diary. Understand? Whether what you have done all day is correct or not correct. Yeah? You must. A Buddha who is not correct is an incorrect Buddha, okay? <laughs> now, you know that already, yeah? Mm, so, I just want correct Buddha, no? I don't want fake Buddha. Now, you have to be careful like that because it's so easy to be tempted. Oh, why not? You know, it's very easy for us to be tempted, yeah? So we always have to check it, control our thinking. Oh, the candy is over there, why not taking some, you know? Nobody's looking. Or oh, master can buy more anyway. Yeah? It's not the reason for you to take it. You see? Because I don't ask you to contribute. You should not think that you could, you know, and should take everything else from me. That is not correct. Yeah? I don't take something from you, not necessarily that I'm rich, okay? I just I want to keep clean. I make an example for you. We all have to. And for, for the same reason, you should pay when you come to any center to eat. I pay also here. The food, I pay also. I pay for all the residents who stay here as well. So that the, the, the money you pay is just for you. Because if we eat, then you're short. You understand? They calculate it, for example, for 10 persons. Eh? And if we eat like 13 persons, then the food will be different, short, okay? So if I'm here, I pay also. So it's not because I want you to pay because I want your money, nothing like that. Huh? Even if I'm rich, you pay. Yeah, and whatever belongs here, you leave it alone. You are allowed to use it, to share it, but not to take it. And if I say no, it's no. Anybody who say no is no. Not just master say no. Especially master say no, then it's no, no, no. Understand this? Yes. You understood? Yes. Good. I hope it's the last time I have to tell you about the five precepts. The reason I did not elaborate about all this all the time because I trusted that you understood. I trusted that you are intelligent and you're morally high enough to come in for initiation. That is the basic. The five precept is the basic to graduate into initiation. So I did not keep telling about all this, I thought, you know. We established for a long time already, over two decades already, and I have to still talk about this. We have to let it flow. Whatever we don't use, we must give it away, sell it, Make it recycle, yeah? We can't just keep something we don't use. That you know already, or? Yes or no? Yes. I did say this before or no? Yes. And the five precept is clear, right? Yes. Yes. And what did you come from initiation for? You know, right? Yes. Use your power for what? Huh? To Do what? To go to the kingdom of God, to go to heaven. Yes, to go to heaven. I did not promise you that you come for initiation and then you have a bigger meditation hall or something. <laughs> that, that was not the condition of initiation, right? No. I did not even say that I will buy a center meditation hall, no? And you know, before that, I even uh, give them some money to pay off the old center already. 
It's not much, but just to pay off their, you know, mortgage so they don't have to continue paying. I also really give something already, and every time I go there, I pay my meal, you know. And I pay for some other stuff. I'm not telling you this to boast about it. I'm just telling you that I did already some, yeah? So I should not ask more than what I'm willing to give, yeah? I don't know. If you really want a bigger meditation hall or something like that, I don't blame you. Everybody want more comfortable. And the more, the better, I guess. Huh? Then you could find another master who are richer. Yeah. Sure, there are some richer, you know. Yes. Uh, they don't even know what to do with their money. <laughs> so maybe you go there, huh? Don't stay in here and doing this kind of stuff. That, suppose, you know, such a good meditation practice and giving so that lowly purpose. You understand? Using it to force people to give what they don't want. When I was younger, you know, when I just began my mission, yeah, I had some uh, disciple became a resident, eh? monks and nuns, and we didn't have much money, but we, we walk around and look around. One of the residents, oh, Master, this is a very good place. If we have this, huh, every Sunday people can come sit meditate better because we rented a small place. Because more and more people come and I don't have place for them to sit in the rain, so we rented a place with whatever little money I have. At that time we just plant vegetable and I make like soya sprout to sell. And because the, that place was full of ghosts and nobody ever buy that place for a long time, you know, since Qing Dynasty or something. Everybody was afraid of that place, so they didn't buy it, you know, for a long time. And the grass even grow into the driveway, cover the driveway, you know. It even uh, sprouted and piercing through the aspa road and <laughs> grow on the road. So when we came, we have to clear in order to walk in the house. So you know how long people have not lived there. The grass is taller than the tallest guy in this house. And it grow also inside the yard and through into the living room and everything, <laughs> you know, nearby and, you know, around the house is completely covered by grass. Uh, this tall, you know, tall, very tall grass and the hard kind of grass. The grass, when you look at it, you thought it's like sugar cane. <laughs> yeah, that big, you know, this kind of grass, you know, big, big, bigger. So we had to clear all that in order to go inside to, to live and clean up and wash everything, you know, we'll do together. And then we have a little living room for meditation hall. But, you know, one of my uh, so-called uh, nun at that time, she, we walk around this infinity sometimes. At that time, we didn't even have car. So we walk around, she says, Oh, Master, this house very nice. <laughs> I say, Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. And she say, Master, why don't you use your magical power to kick this guy out? <laughs> And then we can, you know, buy it cheap or something. Oof. Kind of resident, you know. <laughs> but later she knew she's wrong, of course, and she told me, yeah, that's correct, that master scolded me. Yeah. <laughs> I scolded her, I said, you should never have such, a, you know, incorrect thought like that in your head. This is people's house, yeah? She said, yeah, but he don't have any merit, Master. He eat meat, he drink wine. How does he have a bigger house than you have? <laughs> you know, she said, I'm a master, I should have better. I said, well, that's his merit, you know? Maybe he's nobody at this lifetime, but maybe last life he has done something good, yeah? Have uh, given to people or do some very uh, meritorious deed. So in this lifetime, he enjoy his merit. That belongs to him. So I said to her, well, you know, you don't use magical power for this thing. You should know that. But she was new, you know, and I don't scold her too much. But I said, this is a very wicked idea that you have. You should not have this. It's very bad for you. We don't take people's house or things away and don't use the power to do that. <laughs> Above all, no, not the power. Living in such a ghost house, you know, <laughs> a rented and ghost-infested house. Yeah, but that was already the best. 
Later on, we don't even have that house <laughs> because after we live there for a long time, the uh, we clean it well and we make everything nice. We plant vegetable and all that. It looks very neat and tidy, and nobody afraid anymore. So when they come in, they look, you know, even look from outside. People walk in and out, you know, very happily. And especially at that time, they still wear monks and nuns robe, you know. They look very dignified. If the monks live there, it must be a lot of merit. So uh, they sell it immediately. <laughs> and we didn't know that. They didn't even tell us. Yeah. So later we moved out, moved to the riverside. <laughs> Have a bigger environment, you know, <laughs> the sky <laughs> and <laughs> the earth, all to ourselves. Yeah. Was it dangerous sometimes, you know, when the water swell up? Because when it rained on the source, you don't know it. And the water come out very quickly. <laughs> One time we almost drowned. <laughs> but luckily I knew it. So every day I positioned one guy, huh? one monk or one attack turn to, to watch the water. <laughs> luckily he didn't meditate very deep that day. So <laughs> they tell us, oh, let's go, let's go quick. <laughs> Everybody run, run, run. <laughs> yeah. I was young and, you know, a little bit carefree. I have to tell you that I was too carefree. Yeah. Sometimes we just drink water from the river and we don't know where the river comes from. And we <laughs> couldn't care less, you know. And sometimes we don't even know, oh, there's no, no river even, you know. There's a water came from somewhere. We just see the water and we filter it and then we use it. Yeah, because we cannot keep staying in one place too long, you know, at that time. Yeah, yeah so, okay, when I give you initiation, before initiation you know the five precepts first. You see what I mean? Yeah, because we cannot build a greatness and spiritual splendor on something that is as shaky as immoral behavior. Do you understand me? Even if you have power, you became very powerful, but you don't have enough moral standard. You became only the king of illusion, a maya. You can never become Buddha. You can never become anything great. Yeah? Just power. You see, that's why in the old time when they select a king or a politician, to work for the people, they look on the moral standard. Hmm? Oh, nowadays maybe it's still some, <laughs> but you know, if you want to be something great, you have to build it on something great. Yeah, you can't become a Buddha and then still in at the same time and doing all kind of nonsense stuff. Yeah, right. Okay, so now you know, huh? And the reason I also let you pay here, if I don't let you pay, I have a better reputation. Oh, Master Generous, anybody can come to her house, eat anything they want. I could be like that, but I don't want that. I don't care about my reputation. I care that you be a good person, here and everywhere. I start from here, okay? You're good manner, good standard begins at home. This is your home. You show it to me first. I train you from here first. You be independent. You look after yourself before you can both that you are taking care of sentient beings and saving the planet. Do you understand me? Yes. So for that reason you pay wherever you go. Yeah? All the residents, when they come and live in your house, do they pay? Yes. Anybody who holds a resident? One? Who? Who? Raise hand. Yeah, okay. Did they pay you? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I told you. You also? Yeah. They pay you? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I taught them. You see? They have to bring their own sleeping bag, bring their own bowl and whatever utensil, you know, just a bowl and chopstick, whatever, so that they don't bother you. Yeah? So you don't have to wash the blanket after they left. Even then they have to pay for their meal and an extra if they go in your car or whatever. They did pay, right? 
See? Right? Yes or no? Yes. Good. So you see what I mean? Yeah? Charity begins at home. Good manner also begins at home. You see, if a child don't behave well, they blame the mother and the father, no? They say, oh, your parents don't teach you well, yeah? But I do teach you well. We have so many lectures and DVD and every month uh, news, news magazine. Although I don't say all the time on the lecture, like you must keep the five precepts, but the teaching, the talking, everything emphasizing on that as well, yeah? all kind of examples, all kind of lessons from the old time, and all that is to emphasize the clean living, yeah? You see Kabir, huh? I told you the story, how clean Kabir was, yeah? How pure he is. And I tell you the story also, Mirabai, the princess, who give his master, who is a you know, poor couple or something, uh, a diamond which he could, you know, sell and live the whole life, you know, nicely, but he did not take it. She put it on the roof and it will still stay there for a long time until she come back. And she asked, Master, why are you still poor like this? Why are you still working and earn your living? I give you a diamond and I put it there in front of your door. And the Master said, wherever you put it, it's still there, go get it. <laughs> you understand? Yes. What for you listen to all this story and not learning anything from it? I'm not trying to amuse you by being a good storyteller or a good translator from the old books or something like that. These are for you to digest and make it your own uh, manner, your own uh, good nature, your own uh, moral standard. Understand me? I am your master. And you know, my money is not for myself. My money could be used to benefit the multitude, yeah, through different channels. And you still want to keep it stuck there, just for 40, 50 people, for yourself, just because you like it. It's no good, is it? Huh? No. Do you understand the consequence? Yes. How can this be all these years? I ask myself. It hurts me, you know. It hurts my feeling. You are my disciples. Not only you don't contribute, you want to take. What a shame. No? Yes. And because you pay here, somebody is complaining the heart. You don't have to pay, I told you already. But if you have the money, you pay. Because this is not a homeless shelter, no? Huh? And you are not... Uh, 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 disabled of some kind, yeah? If you don't have money, of course, sometimes you lost your job or something, or you just be in trouble, then you don't pay. Nobody say anything. It has been always like that, yeah? All this time, we don't ever pay even. They go to Meoli, nobody pay nothing. It's not like this. But then I thought, okay, why not, huh? <laughs> Let them begin. Now, there's a practice long time already. They should be a helper to the societies instead of being uh, uh, somebody who rely on someone else, you know, something like that. I don't, I don't like it. But of course, we never check who pay, who not pay. Eh? Did I ever scold somebody who did not pay here? No. <laughs> never. I don't even ask who pay or not. It's just for you to, to feel good about yourself, yeah? That you are independent. And you're capable of taking care of yourself and you correct everywhere you go, that's it. Okay? But in case if it's too much, then you don't pay that much. You know, you pay less or you don't, whatever. But there should be the standard that you, you, you look up to, okay, I should take care of myself, you see? Because that means you're working at home. <laughs> you go into work and you contribute something, okay? You know what I mean? To the society. We grow up this much, we eat so much food from this world already, okay? We own so much to the society there, and not only human beings, we own to animals, to insects, who pollinate our food. You understand me? Yes. So if we pay a little bit back, that is just fair. 
not even good yet. It's just fair. You see what I mean? Just fair, just enough, just the way we should do. Hmm? Well, unless you become uh, a monk or nun or something and you don't work, but you work in a different way. See what I mean? In the spiritual field. Okay, that's different. Or if you lost your job and you don't have money, okay, it's no problem. It's not a question like you must <laughs> pay. It's a question of your dignity. Understand me? Yeah? All right. You capish? Yes. Yeah. And up to now in Mali, they still don't pay. Whoever wants to give, whatever, they do it or not. So if you feel the system here no good, you can go to Mali every Sunday free, <laughs> free food. A free video lecture. <laughs> you can look at my video over there, for example, yeah? Yeah. We can also not pay, but I don't know. You prefer not pay, then we abolish the system. Huh? What do you think? You like to pay. Yeah, it's better. Better you pay. It's better for the self-respect. What? It's good for your own self-respect. Yeah, that's true also. Yeah, also recycling the stuff, you know? Because if you don't pay, somebody else would give donation and keep asking me all the time, you know? Where is the box? <laughs> Where can we put the money, you know? Because some people like to, to donate and all that, more than, more than they should, you see? So here we don't take even donation, just whatever you pay for your food, that's finito, you know? Whatever you pay for the expense, that's it. Okay, so that's good then. Otherwise, Somebody pay a lot, somebody don't pay. It's just the same system. It just uh, make my uh, reputation more shining. Like, oh, <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> Food, <laughs> she come. It's very generous. Give everybody. Why should I do that? I give it to the poor, the homeless, but I don't have to give it to you. You are so much already. No, I don't mean money, you know. Yeah, yeah. I promise you I give you teaching free of charge, and that I keep all the time, yeah? Yes, Everything else, <laughs> you pay yourself. <laughs> if you can pay, you pay. It's, it's more independent, okay? Mm. Well, maybe we also don't need to pay all that, but the problem is if don't pay, then people always come and ask, you know, because there's small places, where to put the money, how much, and some people like to, to give it in front of everybody so they know, I want to donate something, where I put it? Where? You know? <laughs> so it's also breeding something else, you know? Everything is not so perfect. Yeah, the basic stuff, but uh, it's good to remind you now and again, eh? keep to your five precepts. Eh? Even if you are Buddha already, I don't care, you keep the five precepts for me, okay? Yes. Hmm. I like correct Buddha. Eh? <laughs> okay, now I'm going downstairs. And you watch TV here instead. <laughs> yeah, what to do? So many children. <laughs> so you. Yeah. I do love you very much. You know that. But sometimes I really have to force myself also to come here. Because I'm lazy, you know. <laughs> I'm getting older. And I like my place. Yeah. You don't have to wear in any stuff, makeup, nothing. But uh, when I see you, I also love you so much, and I also want to keep you. <laughs> it's funny, you know? If I don't see you, I don't care, you know? <laughs> Truly, I don't wish to see you at all, you know? I wish to stay just in my place. Every day wear the same clothes for three, four days and, until I throw it on the wall, and if it stick there, I mean it's time to wash. <laughs> <laughs> if it's still falling on the floor, then I still wear it. <laughs> Simple life, you know? Yeah. But when I see you, oh, I love so much. I don't want you to go. And when I don't see you, I don't want to come here. <laughs> Can you explain why I'm so complicated like that? Huh? Normal. No? It's normal. Normal? Yeah. Why? Why normal? I thought it's not normal. <laughs> huh? It is. It is? Okay, thank you. I'm normal. <laughs> After all, I'm normal, okay. You have a normal master. Ah, lucky for you. Hmm, all right. I'm going downstairs, okay, Kitty?
I love you guys so much. Look at you all. <laughs> so loving, loving. Oh, <laughs> what am I to do with you? <laughs> I love to bring you all my <laughs> Beautiful people, my God. Hey, Hungarian. <laughs> Whoever you are. <laughs> What can I do with you? You stole my heart. I could see you every day like this and I never feel tired. But when I don't see you, I feel tired. <laughs> like I don't want to come. You know, I have to confess to you like that. I was reluctant to come. But I know I had to come, of course, but not like, oh, I'm looking forward to go to the people. No, but when I see you, oh my God, I want to hug you and kiss you all day. <laughs> So lovely. I know why you want to see me, because of that feeling, huh? Yes. Different when you look at the video, right? Yes. Okay. okay, good, good. I got it. <laughs> see you later, okay? I'm sorry, we don't have enough room for everybody, but we're okay, huh? Okay. How many Vietnamese here? A lot, huh? Từ ngoài Bắc ra hả? Trời, từ ngoài Bắc qua đây hả? Miền Nam hả? Bao nhiêu người đâu? Có hai người thôi. Ờ, bây giờ mới được qua hả? Mấy người đó đâu? Đâu lại ngồi đây coi mặt mấy đồng chí đó coi coi. À, come here. Hai người. À, hai người trên đó hả? Ok, ok, ok. Ok, ok. <cười> hai người đó đó hả? Wow. Sau 15 năm nay con mới được qua. Ôi, chù, giờ tội nghiệp không? Thôi, thôi mời, mời miếng bánh kẹo đây, ok. <cười> Lấy mũ, lấy mũ. Hai người vợ chồng hả? Dạ. Ok, thôi chia nhau ăn cho nó, cho nó lãng mạn nhé. Ờ, à, ngồi đây đi. Ok. À, không có gì. Ừ. Ok. This is a story, a kind of true story, about uh, a very bad consequence of killing animals, yeah? Ok. It's uh, happened in Qin Long Dynasty. Mm, you know the Qin Dynasty, yeah? Mm. It's a king called uh, Qin Long. Qin Dynasty. Okay, so the king name is Qin Long. is in the Qin Dynasty, yeah. Under his uh, dynasty, this story happened. Okay. It is at the end of Qin Long Dynasty. All right. So now, uh, in the place called uh, Runzhou, huh, the the people they are very, very, very uh, kind of very vicious. They love to kill. The whole vicinity, the population of that place, is very, very vicious. They're brutal. It doesn't matter if they are old or young. Or little kid, they are already born in this kind of uh, tradition to kill. They love to kill animals. They never uh, think twice about killing any animals. Also, killing their own children. Such a terrible tradition. Okay. In some family, if they already have other uh, girls, you know, because in the old time, they have more uh, preference for boys, yes. They even say, if you have one boy in the house, then you can say you have children. If you have ten girls in the house, you can say you have no children. Yeah, because in the old time, that it's just a macho society. They think that the, the boys are the one who carries family name. 
So if you have a boy and he married to somebody and he have children, then your name, the family name will live forever, you see? Like Mr. Chen and then Mr. Chen Junior and then Junior Junior, it will continue forever. And they like it like that. So your name will not die. The clan will not die with the boy. So they like to have boy instead of girl. So if they have a girl already and they have another girl, for example, they will kill that girl. Either they bury the girl alive or they drop her in the water and make her die. And they don't have remorse because they have been taught and trained in this ruthless mentality. Do you understand how a wrong concept could infect people like this, yeah? Change the loving heart of a parents even into such a cruel, cold-blooded and ruthless person. Kill your own babies, yeah? It's not possible to even imagine this. The population of this area, every day they go to uh, get the animals or, you know, those small little snails. Yeah. They go get them a lot to eat or to sell as a living, a way of to live. Yes. Also, they taught their children to do the same to go get all kind of things, you know, birds and uh, snails and fish and uh, frogs, yeah? And then teach them how to open them up and vivisect them and all that. And even then they clap in their hand and say, look how my boy is so, so heroic, so strong and so brave, you know? Thing like they encourage children into this kind of ruthless habit. The whole population of that area is like that. Incredible. The more the children kill in animals or small little snails or frogs like that, the more the parents feel proud of them and the more they encourage them, clapping their hands, applauding them and encourage them to do more. They're very proud. The parents are very proud if the children become more and more ruthless like that. So, the children grow up in this kind of encouragement, you know, wrong conception and ruthless tradition. So the more they grow up, the more they become vicious and ruthless, you know, remorseless. So they kill anything, anyone. They have no remorse in their heart. They don't know anything better about compassion or being nice to others, or being compassionate to others, being nothing. They've been taught since they were kid already to be vicious. So when they grow up, you know, they carry with them this kind of killing energy around them all the time. One day, one of the citizens of this uh, area slept and dreamed that there were two, two officials wearing black clothes and in the hand of the two officials there were a book, also black cover and something written inside. This man dreamed that he and the villagers went there and asked the two officials in black clothes, what kind of book are you having in your hand? So uh, one of the officials say that this is the book that call the killing record. Yes. And the consequence of the killing. The book is written about who is killing whom and how much punishment that person will have to endure because of the killing. And then the two officials in the black clothes also advise them that they should uh, begin to have the heart for living beings, yeah? The heart not to kill, but to help, to live and let live, and to help people to live. 
but of course they don't listen, huh? And the, the officials in the black clothes also tell them that because if you don't begin to change your way of life, soon the whole city will be submerged underwater, will be drowned, the whole city. Five days later, after the dream, the whole city of Renzhou was really drowned under the river. It's all go down there. Suddenly, it seems like the whole city just wake up, and then everything happened so fast. Yes, suddenly they see their house, their carriage, their uh, furniture, everything just suddenly, you know, falling down into the river. They want to open their mouth and call for help, but then they also drown into the river at that second, all of people. Ah! Strangely enough, one person escaped. Hmm. Her name is Kong. Mrs. Kong, uh, normally she always tell everybody, please don't kill animals, try to stop the killing, and try to respect lives of all beings. That is Every day she tell everyone to stop the killing, but nobody listened to her. On the contrary, her lifestyle is that every day she tried to broom all the snails, you know, that all over the, the streets so people don't step on them or they don't take them to eat. So she will groom them with a broom together and she will put them back into the river or somewhere safe. And also she very careful about the, the ants and all that. You know, she also take care of them, broom them away, or giving them food. And this is the thing that she does daily, contrary to the whole village who is always bent on killing anything inside. Yeah? Everyone in this city laughed at her. You know, while they was alive, while they were alive, they look at her every day, grooming and saving the ants and saving the snails. They all laugh and make fun of her and ridicule her and humiliate her a lot. But she didn't care. She feel very happy doing that, saving lives. She was very happy doing that every day. Yes. The day that the whole city was having this disaster of the river water you swallow the whole city. That day, it happened that her smallest child was uh, having a uh, fever. So she has other children perhaps not there. So she has to carry this little child to one of the temple in the other city, other place, to, uh, you know, pray to the Buddha, to <laughs> help the kid. And because of that, both of them were saved. But of course it's not just that, but just because she has been doing good things all her life, you know, saving life. On the contrary, the city of Runchow has been a cruel, ruthless, remorseless population. So they all drown together with their possession and everything. This story title is The Punishment for Killing. Now, in the law of our countries, or any country, you can kill animals, you kill snails, who care? Yeah, nobody care. Nobody will punish you by law for doing that. But the law of heaven is different, eh? The law of karma is different. So the whole city is just drowning there. Truly, if the city is not drowned, then so many girls will be drowned also. You see, they drown their own babies. They bury alive, they just throw them in, in the pit and cover with, with dirt. Can you imagine what kind of people are they? Yeah? So it's no wonder that they have to, to die this way. Yeah? Now you see, when we are alive, and if we don't try to take care 
of our moral standard, no matter how much money we have, it will be nothing. When we die, it's nothing anyway. Not to talk about if we have sudden disaster like this. Huh? At the moment, in, in the perilous situation of our planet, it's much more for us to think like about this story. There's much more for us to, to, to give our thoughts to, né? Even though maybe the people around or people don't kill their babies anymore, but maybe they still do, you know? There's abortion when the baby's already baked inside their stomach. There are wars and everything else, you know? Killing the animals as well. And if we keep eating the animals, then already... We also indirectly killing animals and other people because we make the world people hungry. Because the food is not evenly distributed. Yeah? Therefore, it's a similar situation. So it is better to be vegan, to save other people and also saving ourselves in turn. What we saw, we shall reap. That is for sure. And this was a true story supposed to be a true story, at the end of the Qinglong dynasty. Qinglong was a very famous king, you know, right? He's a good one. He always uh, disguised as a simple citizen to go out with a couple of bodyguards, maybe attendant, assistant. He go around looking to see how people live, you know, how his citizens live, if they live well or not. And he's looking for those corrupted officials which is too far away from the court for anybody to know. So he disguised himself as a normal person. And that's how he discovered many uh, injustice uh, system in the local government. And he punished those who are not just and righteous officials. And he uh, awarded those who are good and, you know, clean and corrupted. Uh, officials in different uh, areas, yeah? He go different areas and check out, <laughs> and nobody knows. Sometimes because he went on secrecy, so some of the officials at the local area even put him in jail and, and want to beat him up and all that stuff, you know, and he was in danger many times because he could not prove who he is, and he did not want to prove it. Otherwise, if he prove it, who he is, then the, the, the corrupt officer will not show all their vice out so that he has no, no proof to, to punish them. So he was a very good king. And uh, the father, uh, Kang Xi, also very, very clean, very correct king. Okay. So now we all know that if we kill someone or kill any living being, we will get killed, you know in a very tragic way, not just a normal death. And it's not only about the, the death here, it is about the, the tragedy that's even waiting for them after they die, you know? They will go to hell and continue to endure more and more very tragic punishment for a long time for doing such a bad thing to their babies and children and, uh, you know, animals, and small animals, big animals. Even just killing, you know, some snails like that, but day after day they use it as a profession, you know, so they kill, oh, they kill countless of beings as snails, because snails also have soul in them, every little thing, the ants also. So we have to be very, very careful how we treat the planet, yeah? How we treat our Earth. So I tell you, be vegetarian. It's good for you, huh? you know, right? By now you know, okay? Right. The Baha'i Faith. Regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing Buddhism All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra
Also, after the birth of the baby, care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat. Because, at the difficult time of birth, there are innumerable evil demons worship performed or such sacrifice offered would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state. Karma means retribution. Kasiti Garba Sutra Cow die. The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints Christianity Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible Confucianism All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having hell, there is no way for your deliverance. Adelila He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures, lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu Islam Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith Jainism A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been specially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Katanga Judaism And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible. Blood meaning flesh. Sikhism. Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way Tibetan Buddhism The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth, to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great compassionate, loving self nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did, and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. Any question? Hmm? I have a question. Yeah, tell me. You know that people feel that animals don't have any souls and mm. are worthy, and that gives people usually the feeling, oh, they're nothing, we have yeah. the right to kill them. Oh, where does this come from? Because even Christian people say animals have no souls, and that justifies them for doing whatever they want. Could you expand on that? Tradition. Tradition. One blind lead another blind, yeah? Just like this city that I have just told you. The children were born innocent and don't know anything, but the parents encouraged them because the parents of their parents have encouraged their parents to do that. And then the parents think it's right, so continue like that, and nobody enlightened them. And it might be too late to tell them anything. Therefore, sometimes heaven will just have to destroy them all before they infect other cities nearby. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Just like you have a cancer cell, yeah? Sometimes the doctor have to operate it. 
destroy that cancer cell before it spread all over your body. You understand me? So sometimes disaster is a warning to us. Even when it did not come to our city yet, we have to be waken up and ask ourselves why. Yeah? And then we, we know we have to prevent it to happen. We have to know it beforehand. We have to avoid to do what they do in order to get the same consequence that they got. Yeah? You see, the problem is uh, the society is a big uh, infectious system, you know? One tells the others, and if you don't have strong enough moral standard, then you sway. Yeah, you sway, and one day you lean to them a little bit, a little bit, and then one day you go with them. Huh? And that's what the king of Maya won. He spread all this wrong conception. Yeah? He used his um, subordinate to come up to this world to try to sway people like that. One day you don't sway, next day you sway, next day you sway, and then you're dumb, you're finished. That's why you have to keep your moral standard strong, like protect your own life. Otherwise, it's easy to, you know, to be tempted and do wrong. You see, sometimes the subordinate of the devil comes into this world. He uh, look like us. I told you already that the astral beings can manifest themselves as human beings for a certain time on earth. And during that certain time, one week, two weeks, one month, two months, he tried to influence people, the one with the weak moral standard. You see what I mean? If you are a hundred percent, then he cannot do anything. He try, he try, and he fail, he knows it. Or he just leave you alone, yeah? But if he see you maybe only 60%, 50% morally correct, then he try to shake you up. If you are 100% morally correct, he cannot corrupt you, he know, he leave you alone. He just go to those a little bit weak. And maybe you have 60% today, and he keep tempting you, and then you lose, and you have only 50%. And next day you have 40%, and next week he come back again, you have 30%, and slowly you lose. Do you understand me? So you have to know where you're going. You have to know what is good and keep to it. Even if you lose your life, you keep it. Because losing this life is nothing compared to what you lose afterward if you lost your moral standard. The people of this city, after they die by drowning, that's nothing yet. Drowning to die is nothing. It's hell, terrible hell waiting for them, more punishment. You know, they've been haunting them for, for hundreds of years or thousands of years. That's more scary. To be drowned in water, to die, that, that, that's not much yet. You understand me? To lose a physical body is not the, the, the worst thing that you can lose. If you lose the freedom of your soul, that's the worst thing. Because if we practice like Kwan Yin Method and we keep to the inside the fence of this moral standard, okay, then... Even if you die, your soul is free. You don't have to come back to this similar body and suffer again. Or you don't have to go to the astral body, which is similar to this body, but that body will be burned in hell and, and be tortured with all different kinds of, of, of terrifying you know, punishment. It's, it's painful. Just like here in this world, if somebody stabs you with a knife in your physical body, and you feel very, very painful, you understand? Imagine in the astral body you feel the same like that, but your body won't die. And it keeps stopping and pain forever like that. You know, not one time, two time, but keep burning either forever or stopping forever or do all kind of cutting forever like that. Can you imagine? Here, they cut you one time, two time, maybe, and then you bleed to death. You finish, yeah? And then you don't suffer no more. But in the astral body you don't die. And you feel the same pain like in the physical body. Do you understand? That is the difference. And that's what many people don't understand. They don't know it. They think, okay, well, I don't see any punishment now. I don't see any consequence. I continue to do bad thing or killing. I don't care. Who can tell me what? They don't know what's waiting. See? It's not losing the physical body that you should be worried is losing the freedom of the soul. See, 
if we die in this physical body, also free because you are morally correct and you are in a higher level, yeah? Okay? No devil can have any excuse to come and tell you that, mm, you made this trouble, I can take you, because you are not correct. You see what I mean? No excuse for him. So your soul is free. You go to third level, fourth level, you come back for wherever you want, yeah? But if you fall into the astral body and case in it and fall into hell, wow, terrible, torturing, forever, for a long time, and the body don't die, that's a problem. You cannot be free from it. So the soul be encased in that and suffer, suffer consciously. Do you understand me? But that's what the devil wants, like to tempt people so that we stay here forever, so that he can control us all the time. You know what I mean? Because if we are gone, we live alone, no? lonely, no? And nobody to, to tempt, nobody to seduce, and nobody to make trouble. No theater for him to watch, yeah? Because if we listen to him, then the whole theater come up. For example, you two sit together nicely, huh? And maybe one of you are highly standard, the other not. And the devil come to the, the weaker one and talk something, make her fight with this one. <laughs> and then they're both fighting together, and this one get wounded, and this one lose some spiritual merit, and he's happy. For oh, I like that. You see what I mean? Otherwise, there's nobody who play play theater for him. Imagine the king of, of, of devil just sit there alone, nobody to harass, nobody to tempt, nobody to control. Can you imagine? Hmm? Yeah, that's why he make trouble. So that the theater keep go on, and then he he likes that. So if we are clever, we keep to our standard. Okay, we have to because that's our salvation in this world. Once you are in the third level, at least you're free, yeah? You do what you want. But over there you will never do anything wrong, because no temptation. Everything just correct and good. You see what I mean? So wait until you go up there, then you can do what you want, okay? Right now, keep strict yeah? standard of living. Even if I'm not there, even nobody look at you, even nobody know what you're doing, you must keep to your standard of Moral, okay? Yes. First, self-respect. Yes. Second, freedom of the soul. Third, benefit everybody else, okay? Including yourself. All right. So, any more question? No? Good, huh? Yeah. Dịch sư phụ con 14 năm con có thể học đạo. Thì cũng có những cái cảm nhận mà con nhận được là trong người con có hai cái thể một là cái thể hồn hai cái thể vía cái thể hồn khôn thì đôi khi con gặp thánh nhân con gặp đức mẹ Maria con gặp Chúa Giêsu và ba lần con gặp thầy còn cái phần vía của con đôi khi con cũng không có muốn đi đến những cái cảnh giới thấp con biết là cảnh giới thấp nhưng mà con dạy nó không được con biểu đừng đi đến đó mà nó cứ vẫn đi rồi sư phụ làm sao có thể là dạy cho nó bảo rằng đừng ở ghi ghế mà ghi học đạo cho nó đúng thì thì lúc đó kêu sư phụ kéo lên ok giờ dạ. dạ, con dạy mà không ở dưới nó vui dạ. à. cũng như nhiều người đâu có muốn đi lên thiên đàng đâu ở dạ. đây ngoài chết không chịu đi kéo không chịu lên đó hả à, không dạ any more question hmm no you done yeah hmm no more